Hi Floss Tube and Instagram friends. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Contented Needleworker Kim. Today is March 13, 2024, and this is Floss Tube episode number 71. So welcome. I have a lot of cross stitch show and tell for you again today. We just had market. I love market. Market and Sampler September are two of my favorite things that happen in the cross stitch world. So while I had the plan to just have a handful of things um, pre-ordered and, you know, if, to get right now and the rest I was going to space out through the rest of the year, uh, spoiler alert, that didn't happen. I have a lot of things that came in and so at the end of the video I will share with you my purchases from market. There are still more, but these are the ones that I have to share with you today. So uh, let's see what happened since the last time we were together. I went to the attic in Mesa, Arizona, and I got to meet up with my friend Renee, Prairie Stitcher 515. We had a wonderful time. We were at the store. Um, we went to breakfast. The four of us, her husband and my husband, all four of us went to breakfast one morning, had a great time. And uh, we also were able to take a trip over to uh, Vicki from Needlework Press. So gracious, let us come and um, showed us around her home. So that was a real treat. As well as I made a video, got to visit with my friends, Amy, Mrs. Flossie, and Diane, the woodpecker's daughter. And the three of us made another video together. So if you haven't already been over there to see that on Mrs. Flossie's channel, Amy's channel, I will link that below. So a few of the things I'm going to show you, I showed there, but that's all right. I had a couple of finishes. I want to make sure that uh, you got to see. So uh, let's just go ahead and get started. I will start with some of my finishes. And the easiest one here on the side is a smaller one. So let's go with Stacy Nash, Pretty in Pink Pin Keep. You see I made a few adjustments. I left off this top flower, so I brought it down a little bit, made the spool a little bit narrower, and um, I think, oh, I just changed a couple of the motifs, but it's generally mostly the same. And this is 40 Count Affogato by Fiber on a Whim. So I have a little scissors charm that Diane gave me, and I will put that right there and either frame it or make it a pillow. I haven't decided yet. It also would be, it would look nice on the top of a box. It actually fits on top of one of my stitchy boxes. My jewelry box is turned into a stitchy box. So a couple of different options there. I have a number of things that need to be uh, finished into pillows or framed and uh, it's just one of those things I haven't gotten around to yet. Okay, now this one, I didn't pull the cover. I'm, I'm actually not sure where it's at, but I misspoke. I think I shared my finish with you the last time. I did misspeak though. Uh, this is 32 count and I did one over one on 32 count. On, uh, this is by Mrs. Flossie. It's called Dear Valentine, and there is more to the actual design, but I just stitched the rows, thinking that this would make a nice uh, scissors uh, pocket or a pin keep um, to go again in one of my stitchy boxes or on a tear tray. Um, then this was a big one. I, rem I, can't, I looked up to see when I started this, and it was it wasn't from last year. I believe it was from the year before, but it's an older whip. Uh, Charity for All by Erica Michaels. And I finally have a finish. I discovered that stitching letters, again, not my most favorite thing, but I really love what this says. I've always loved this and um, I'm really happy that I was able to get a finish. I did do the over one, that took quite a bit of time for me. Um, I left out some of the bands going across, so it's not quite a square. I guess it's more of a rectangle finish. I, again, this is one of the things I have to get I have to make a frame for or see if it even fits in a standard size, which it may. Um, let's see. Weeks Dye Works Gray, 40 count, and Cast Iron Skillet, I believe, is the uh, Gast Gentle Arts floss that I used. And I used that for the over one as well. I did not use a, a thinner floss, and it worked all right. If I could, I did full crosses where I could, and if it got a little too thick every once in a while, I would just skip making the, the full cross and just do one leg and it worked out all right. So really, I can, it's still more, it still looks like a bit of a square. Very, very happy to have this one finished. Okay. Then my Martha Walmsley right here to the side, you will see by hats, hands across the sea samplers, Martha Walmsley. 
a uh, exclusive to Hobby House Needleworks. And obviously you will see that I only stitched the bird. I did not cut off the rest of the linen. I still had plenty of room. I'll show you in the back of the uh, plate frame to tuck it. And so if I ever were to change my mind and want to stitch more of the design, that would be a possibility. I'm really just trying to see how I feel about her in this finish. So far, I'm absolutely in love with her. And so I have a feeling she'll stay just like this. But this is Anne Gorilla by Tropical Stitches, 40 count. Really lovely linen. Enjoyed stitching on it immensely. My first Tropical Stitches linen. And um, all the called for DMCs. I do not believe I made any changes. So she's just pulled across. The, she's not even pinned. I didn't do anything other than pull her tight and a piece of foam core. And these. this just came just like this. So I put these extra pieces of foam core for a little bit of thickness so that the, uh, the brackets would hold her nice and tightly. Now this is, um, so you'll see also I did a similar finish in this other, uh, it's a plate frame, but whatever size, whatever shape that would be. This is obviously just a round plate frame. Um, I scuffed it up a bit with some 220 sand, 220 grit sandpaper, and then I put some decor wax. Let me set her here and I will show you. I have a brand new bottle of the decor wax that I'm always talking about. I've shared it with you many a time. It's the same, I believe this is the same brand as Folk Art. I think it's the same brand as Waverly. There's Brie Wax, there's, um, oh, what's the other one I was thinking of? There's just a number of different finish, chalk paint. You can use chalk paint. There's a number of different things you can do uh, for a finish, but I just put a couple of coats of that. And then I took some rub and buff to uh, freshen up the gold on the inside rim there and let it dry for a couple of days. And I made sure that I took a tissue and went around it to make sure that it didn't have any, um, you know, the color wasn't coming off, that it had been cured enough to put my, my stitching in there. You can always seal it with some poly uh, if you're uncomfortable about, maybe if you live in a humid area or something along those lines, you can always seal your finish with some poly. I don't tend to usually do that step, but you can. I think I might have, I might have done a sealant on Agnes up here, Agnes Lyle. I think she was a lot of different products and I did put a poly uh, on top of her, polycrylic. Okay, so that was a very exciting finish. I loved stitching on her. Martha was a joy every stitch. Just the kind of stitching I like, a little bit of that confetti and a bird, the bird motif, just beautiful. Lovely combination of linen and the DMC flosses. Just really, really enjoyed her. I also wanted to make a correction for the um, Elizabeth Isles. You can see back down here, the bird that I did look it up. My Instagram friend, it was She Cave Stitcher Mary, who had this wonderful finish, um, a different design inside the clock, but she was the one that I saw this clock from Hobby Lobby. And Mary, thank you so much for your beautiful finish. It was a real inspiration. Now, if you have this chart, Elizabeth Isles by the Scarlet Letter, you'll already notice that I had to do some cut and paste um, activity to, to get the flower where it's at. It's, this is not the exact design the way it's charted. I did a lot of cutting and pasting to have it come out this way. And I talked more about this the last time, how it just happened to fit in this frame. So I wanted to make sure to give credit to Mary. All right, so then I think we are all done with finishes. I think so. I have a huge pile, as I mentioned. So let's go to a pile of whips now. So this is um, by the Wishing Thorn, Jane Duffin, 1834. And my friend Renee mentioned earlier has a beautiful finish on this where she charted some words here at the bottom. I hope that you'll Prairie Stitcher 515. I hope you'll pop over to her Instagram to see her finish. I, I love it and I was going to do it, but I had already started stitching the border here. So she made an adjustment and did a, just the smaller portion. So I, I will see if I can still fit um, the words in there, what she did. She charted it and, and uh, sent me what she charted. So We'll see if I can make that happen at some point. But I still have quite a bit uh, to stitch on Jane. I pulled her out again and I realized, no, you still have quite a bit. The whole, you know, basket, another bird and the border and such. But I haven't decided exactly how much of Jane I'm stitching. And I should have refreshed my memory on what linen this is. I did it and I have no idea. 
So um, I think I'm using the called for colors on this. Yes, yes, I am. I love that funky bird, that blue. I'm really loving that. I'm not sure that this gray in the middle of the pot, I might have changed that if I thought about it, but it's all right. Stitching the border across the bottom, probably across, the, I, I'm not sure exactly how many changes I'm going to make to Jane. It's kind of a work in progress as I go. Okay, so there's Jane. Then we have, let's see, let's do this one next. I pulled out The Betrothed by GGR. I had started her a while ago. And again, uh, I am making a lot of adjustments to this particular chart in the way of I'm going to stitch it as a band sampler. So I moved around some of the motifs up at the top and I'm leaving off these big um, vases of flowers. But I am thinking I will stitch the row of flowers on either side because I need to make it wide enough as it goes down. So again, another work in progress, but I just, I kept thinking I really want to stitch the uh, woman. I had already stitched the groom and I wanted to stitch the knight and I wanted to stitch the woman. And I thought, just go ahead and get her out. And um, she was really a, a lot more fun to stitch than I thought because of the pretty color that I got to stitch with. That made a big difference. And I left a lot of the center area of her dress empty because I think I'm going to put beads instead of the yellow um, it called for those, the yellow floss from the bottom of her dress to be at the very center of all of those little crosses or pluses, I guess. So, um, gosh, I think I made a decision on stitching the lamb a different color from any of the ones that are charted. So I chose a, a white for that. These are over dyes. And Havana, 40 count Havana by Weeks Dye Works is the linen. So making changes as I go, again, a lot of cut and paste going on. But, uh, and I'm just, I'm hoping, you know, when you do that, sometimes it's hard to get the scale. So I'm hoping that the motif that goes here, that it's it ends up being balanced. So we'll see. I, I, I was, really enjoying everything I was stitching on, which is a good sign, but um, I wanted to make progress on lots of different things. I like to have different things to share with you, and I get bored very easily with us with staying with one whip more than, I think three days is usually the max that I will stick with something, just because I really like the variety. I was watching um, Moonshine Stitchery, Phoebe, and she had made the same comment. She said she has, a, she's talking about the number of whips that she has and the fact that she's been stitching since she was a child and she used to be a monogamous stitcher and she would get bored and she would set her stitching aside just because she didn't want to stitch on it for that period of time. And I realized that is exactly the same thing that has happened with me when I stitched from, I probably didn't start stitching until I was in my, maybe like 18, let's just say approximately 18. And um, I was a monogamous stitcher, not realizing that there was any other way. And I would stitch a lot of things like Paula Vaughn and Mirabilia's and larger things. It took a lot of time. I even have a dimensions like a jungle seam that I stitch. And so there was the last Mirabilia that I stitched. It took me seven years to actually finish because I would get tired of stitching on it and just stop stitching, flat out just stop stitching. And then I go through my things. Oh, well, I should I should pull out my cross stitch again. And when I got back into cross stitching about, I think it was 2016, um, discovered floss tube and all the things. And I have not stopped since. I have stitched almost every day um, since then because I have 60 plus whips and I have a huge variety. I never have to get bored. Uh, I always have something else that I can pull out or start. And I really, really, for me personally, I have really enjoyed having that um, as part of my stitching uh, now. So the next whip that I have is Let No Net Ensnare Me. There are two. This is the uh, picture of the antique. And then here is, she, she. these are both included in the chart. And this is what she um, has reproduced the stitching here, a picture of her reproduced stitching. And so um, I always just like to show both covers when I show the stitching. Now, I am making some changes, just uh, different flosses from my stash, silks from my stash. I just pulled a lot of different colors and um, I'm, I'm generally happy with how it's come out. I'm not sure I'm super crazy about the green that I chose 
for the flowers, but I'm not, I'm not so unhappy that I'm going to do anything about, you know, pulling it out or starting over. This is 40 count wheat by Fiber on a Whim. And I finished up the rest of the bird. I hadn't finished the whole top portion, the wing. I think there's still one more wing to go and the whole, his head and I added a couple of more of the leaves and flowers. It's a lot, there's still a lot more to go. I, I am not planning on stitching the border. I, I think I may have left enough room barely if I change my mind when it's all said and done, but I really don't see myself choosing to stitch this border. It's a little too intense. It'll take a lot of time and there are a lot of other borders I'll, I'll stitch first, but I think it will finish up nicely without the border. So yeah, those, but those flowers and leaves take a bit of time. So, and this is, um, I know I had mentioned last year that 2024, the hashtag, I'm not sure the exact name of it, but the 24 and 24, I'm focusing on all of the different bird charts that I have or something with a bird. So I haven't kept track of exactly how many I have on the go. Uh, there will be 24 or more than, so that won't be a problem, but that definitely counts for one of those. Okay. So then if you watch the video that I did with Amy and Diane, you will see that Diane and I are both stitching along with a lot of other <laughs> stitchers, a peacock, a unicorn, a badger by the Scarlet Letter. We have started, uh, I have started on this side and Diane has started on this side. And so when we shared our whips together, uh, it was fun to see how we were, we were gonna basically meet in the middle. I am making adjustments to this one as well. I talked about that last time. I'm going to bring this whole bottom section over here um, up and leave this part off, leave this part off. And I may still add the, uh, the water at the bottom to the bottom of the chart. I have room in my linen, so that may still happen. I am not stitching the entire thing because I chose this beautiful 40 count linen by Fox and Rabbit called Fossil. And it is a wonderful background color for this piece. I really enjoy stitching on this. And I was doing it, I, I had it in my Lowry in my craft room here. And I would sit down in the mornings and just keep putting in some more threads. But I had a new start that kind of took the place. They can't both be in the Lowry at the same time. So I had another one that's been taking over. Um, I, I will probably put this one back in and continue to make some progress. Um, you get a lot done. You just keep putting in a little bit every day. So I have this one in here and then I have another one going, which I will alternate out in my other, in my living room where I stitch out there. Okay. Let's see who should be next. Let's do needlework panel of a fruit tree with two animals. And I excited to see again. So, um, Susan Stanley started this and that's who inspired me to pick this up and stitch it. And then Rebecca from Hedgerow Stitching uh, is, was waiting for the chart. Her very last video, she mentioned that she's waiting for the chart and she's going to start stitching it as well as I started watching, uh, Karen Combs and I saw her show this chart and she hasn't started it yet, but I've been nudging Karen. Hi, Karen. <laughs> I'm nudging her to see if she perhaps wants to put this into her whips. And I don't know. We'll see. Maybe. Um, but I am doing it on, let's see. I can't remember if it was 37 or 38 and it's legacy linen by, and I'm just drawing a blank. I knew I would forget something. It's Corn Tassel by Legacy Linens. Access Commodities, that's the word I was trying to think of. Lots and lots of crazy threads happening here. I was trying to button some of them up, but there were just so many other things going on, I never got back to it. So here's my progress, a lot of over one. I finished up a lot of uh, the animal down here, the two animals down here. I finished up a lot of this and got into the pretty flowers or cherries. I guess we're thinking they're cherries. I got into those. Um, really, really, really enjoying stitching this. So she'll come back out again soon. I am using the Avera Soie Soie d'Alger and I am doing the tent stitch. So that's just one leg uh, for all of the over one. I'm not doing full crosses. Uh, I will be doing full crosses on anything else that's regular stitching, but I am just doing doing the tent stitch for all of the over one. Let's see if I can set this down, I guess this way. So I think that's everything I needed to say about that one. Then we have, let's do another, my last whip, then we have some new starts. So this has been a favorite 
many of you, I, I just posted on uh, Instagram last night, my progress, and so many of you, this is your favorite that I show. It's been, let's see, I think it was September of not last year, but the year, so 2022, I started this with my friend Barbara, Nevada Stitcher, and many of you joined in. We did the um, hashtag Reflet de Soie, S-A-L. So it's not just Louisa Barney, but any Reflet de Soie. Um, but many of you have started Louisa as well. My friend April, April, April Heirlooms here on Floss Tube has also started this, and it inspires me to keep seeing April's progress uh, as well. Uh, the border, definitely a challenge for me. It, uh, I'm, I love the border. Uh, I'm not loving that portion of the stitching. I, I loved stitching bird. I added the bird last uh, couple of times, um, but I want the border. I want the border done, so I'm doing it. She's beautiful. I have not decided what I will be stitching in the middle. It will be scripture of some sort, but I haven't decided what, what will go there yet. And I did pull out some um, frames that I have thrifted large frames that I just said to see whether it would fit. And the one I pulled out is an exact, it looks like it will be an exactly perfectly wonderful uh, fit just the way it is without me having to cut it down. So that was exciting. Um, and also more inspiration to keep going. So I'll show you way back here. Oops, watch out, Martha. Uh, the entire thing. So I'm almost to the very top. I only have, I think there's a little bit more up here at the top before, let's see if I can grab this, before I come across. So there's one more little section of flower and leaves up here, and then I get to continue on. I'll probably come back over here and stitch um, up is probably what I'll do. We'll see. But this is the part I added. Using all the called for DMCs on 36 count vintage cedar plank by Lakeside Linens. Yes, she's beautiful. Okay, let's set her back up over here. And then we're going to go on to a, a new start, which is also a very large stitch. Okay, GH1857 uh, by Simone. I'm gonna show you the name, both of the names. So here is her name here, as well as her company here. Lots of fun uh, other types of stitches you can do from this chart. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful sampler, but like I said, quite large. This was stitched on 32 count wheat, if I remember what they have it called for here. I'm stitching it on 36 count, hold on, I know, velt. I think this is 36 count velt by Picture This Plus because it just happened to be the closest color match that I had. I would have preferred 40, but I had 36. So I'm not 100% sure that I will have enough room to go all the way to the top. I'm not planning on stitching the border. Um, once I get to the, to the roof of the house, I will then count up and see. It's fine if I can't stitch the very top. I can just stop after the second row. Um, but one strand over two with all of the called for flosses. You can see, barely see, let's see, here's going to be the other pot. I've started the other pot right there. It does show up, uh, I think, better in person than you can see there, but that'll be the edge over here so I can cut off some linen. And very good fill-in stitching. Just sit down, zoom stitching. The house is very easy to stitch because you're not having to there's no mortar. The, the mortar is the background fabric, as well as all the blocks, uh, the bricks are uniform. So there's no counting, you know, zigzaggity. Lots and lots of just fill-in stitching. So been very easy. And like I said, this one has just been living in my, in the Q-snaps here in my Lowry, in my craft room where I can walk in and sit down and just put in some stitches any time of day when Sam, I'm popping on a to have a chat with someone. I can just um, pull this over and, and stitch. So that's been really helpful. Um, let's see. I'm going to set this back over here, and then this next new start I have is if you were at the retreat at the attic for autumn, it's autumn abundance or autumn of abundance. I think I'm adding the word of. Then you received this um, retreat piece from Dawn Collector with a Needle. 
And I have mentioned that uh, if you have this piece because you were at the retreat, then we uh, did a little chat room on Instagram where we're all chatting about it. And then we did a Zoom and Dawn was so gracious to help us figure out all of the things that we needed to know to get started. Um, let me see, it's under here. To get started where with placement, um, you know, the different uh, basting lines that we needed to do and all of that. So I finally gotten a start on this beautiful uh, needle roll. Is that what we're calling it? It's a, yeah, it's a roll, needle roll. So here's my start. This is the kit, everything, uh, 103s. And I believe this is, it's some sort of legacy linen is my guess, but all came in the kit. And that's where I've gotten so far. So I started on the little scroll rod. Dawn likes to stitch with a, um, a, a little <laughs> tiny scroll rod. And it was just too much fabric for me to get it nice and tight. And I just, this was just easier for me. I have more working room. And since I like to roam around, I think this just works better for me on my Q-snaps. So um, that's why I'm going to be stitching it like that. Okay, then we have a really fun new start. Oh my gosh. Now, this was a design that someone shared with me months ago on Instagram. And I'm so sorry that I cannot find the message. Uh, I don't I don't remember. It was months ago and I do not remember uh, who shared it. But at the time, I couldn't find it easily. I thought maybe I'd have to order it from Germany. I'm sure I just had a lot going on. And so I never I never purchased it at that time. But then Lori by Lizma messaged me uh, her finish. She showed me a picture of her finish and I flipped and I immediately downloaded it and was very excited. It's a beautiful bird, bird of paradise. Um, I'm seeing, I'm not sure that you can read. It's Leo Nora Craft. Her name is Donata and she has an Etsy store. I'll try to put the name of it down below because you just can't read it on this paper and I don't think it's anywhere else. So um, when I found out that I could get it from Etsy as a PDF, that was it. That was a done deal. Now, many of you will say, wait a minute, I saw Brenda <laughs> show this. Yes, Brenda was also uh, extremely motivated by Lori's finish and she shared it with all of us on her floss tube as well. So I know that's where most of you have seen all of this by now and many of us are stitching it. So this has been, oh my gosh, my favorite kind of stitching. I just love this kind of stitching. So let me show you what I have gotten done so far because I'm stitching this. So my friend Krista, the wildflower stitcher, uh, she had said, oh my gosh, she even said, did you see this bird? I'm like, yes, <laughs> I saw it, I already have it. And she said, well, let's stitch it together. When should we start? So I was very motivated to get all the things. It's DMC. So that was already something I had, most of the things, to, enough to get started. And uh, so we started it together and it's just been a lot of fun to have. Again, I, I love Mia Sal, stitching with friends. Now, okay, so this linen, let's start there. This linen started out as a piece of Zweigart light mocha. And I was, that's, I think that's what this is actually called for. That's where I got the start spot is she stitched this on just plain old Zweigart light mocha. And I had a piece. And I thought, I'm going to just warm it up a little bit. I'm going to dunk it in a little bit of red. So I took some camel and some taupe and I just splashed even, I think even amounts, I just, and added a little bit of salt, a little bit of vinegar and, you know, put it in the mason jar, added the hot water, stirred it all up, got my linen wet and scrunched it up and shoved it in the jar and just, you know, and left it in there. Well, when I pulled it out, I was like, oh no, it's too dark. I don't think that's exactly what I was looking for. And so I pulled out a piece of platinum and I did the whole thing all over again with a little less of the dye, a little less uh, time in there, a little coffee. And, and I, it was late. I really wanted to get a start with Krista, but it was late and I was just done and I, everything had to dry. And so I hung everything up, hung the both pieces up and said, just decide in the morning. And I was so surprised to see that I really did love the darker piece of linen more than I did the, uh, the lighter so I just was trying to give you a feel for, you know, that blotch at the bottom there. This was, like I said, I just wadded it up and shoved it in the jar and, and this is what came out. So I stitched maybe three days and I just didn't want to put it down because I was really enjoying it so much. 
And then I thought, well, I need to get some progress on some other things. So I set her aside. But those colors, please go check out Lori's finish. I will put her name down below so that you know how to spell it, how to find her. Um, her finish, she stitched it on Dirty Teacup. And I actually have some Dirty Teacup. And it was what I was just going to do was just exactly what Lori did because it's just perfect. Um, but I, I just kind of was it. I only have one piece of dirty teacup, so I wasn't sure that I wanted to use it for this. And that's how I just started playing around a little bit more. But I'm very happy with how that came out. Okay, so then we have, now I was supposed to start this in January. My friends, the Saturday Stitchers, we all said, hey, let's stitch a Biscornu together. And I know Celeste Creates and April both started, I'm not sure if Merritt or I'm not sure if anyone yeah, it's got to start, but I was definitely a slacker because I pulled this out. I finally chose linen last night. Oh my gosh, Shelly was laughing at me. Shelly, my friend, it's from It's Only Stitching. I was talking with her yesterday and I said, I just have to kit it up. And I said, and you know what? It's a kit. It was a retreat piece. It has everything. All I needed to do was stitch the fabric for the attachment to my Q-snaps around the edge of the linen that was provided. And she just started to laugh because I do not enjoy kidding up, but that was pretty bad that all I had to do was stitch on the extra fabric. <laughs> so anyway, I finally did that. I, I ended up not using the linen that came with the kit. I was afraid that it wasn't gonna be quite large enough for me to make the Biscornu. I'm not an expert. I've only made one Biscornu before. It wasn't hard, but it was on Ada which I think is a little easier for me to line up, you know, the squares. And I was a little concerned that I just wouldn't have enough linen. And so I had something that was very similar and I just used a bigger piece. So I had a little more wiggle room um, and sat down and started it this morning so that I would have something to share with you so that I could officially start my Biscornu. So I think this is 36 count Winter's Brew by r, &R. And it's funny because, you know, I always stitch upside down. And yet this is the bottom of the chart and it's charted this way, but I still feel like, well, this is still basically stitching upside down and stitching a swan upside down for the corner of the, the score new over here. Let's see if you can see this better. And I cut my fabric, so we're good to go. I just have to uh, stitch this swan four times. Now I had decided that, or I thought about, maybe I'll make one of the swans black. I think I may, just for fun. Um, I looked up a swan on the internet to see what else, what other color is in a black. And they're kind of like a brown black with some little black or brown accents. So I might be able to still do, still do a little bit of the brown in the feathers. But um, that's, I, it, that's going to be an easy stitch now that I've got, now that I've gotten started. The other uh, sal that I'm doing with some local stitchy friends is with the Menifee Stitchers, we're all going to stitch something from the Sewing Club book. Most of us are stitching the uh, Rose Hips and Ivy, which I will show you, but I think I think maybe a couple of us are just stitching something by Blackbird or maybe something from this book. But here's the drum for Rose Hips and Ivy. And I'm going to use the piece of linen that came in the, the uh, kit for the Stacy Nash, which did I tell you, by the way, this was a retreat piece, Trumpet of Swans with Scorner, but I saw this as available now, so it's been released. Um, I took the linen from this kit, and it's a good size for me to use for the drum for this one. Uh, without stitching the top and the bottom, I'll, I won't stitch the top and the bottom. I'll just do um, fabric on the top, if I make it a drum. I may make it a pillow. It's funny because I remembered it's been years ago now, and I spent a long time this morning or the middle of this the night when I couldn't sleep last night looking for the episode of Kitten Stitcher, where she showed it as, I remembered, I actually remembered that she'd done this as a finish, as a pillow finish, because she'd done like buttons on it, and it was really, really pretty. And so if I don't decide to do the drum, I may copy her pillow finish. Uh, I think it was episode 60, if you're interested, that she shows it on there. Um, it took me a long time, I had to watch, I, had, I skimmed through a lot of episodes <laughs> to find which one it was. I think it was 60. But that is the linen that I'm going to use for that. So I almost got to start on that this morning, but I figured I'd better get to making this video. <laughs> and I couldn't start all the things. So that's going to be happening here pretty soon. Now that I've got the linen ready to go and all the flosses pulled, we're good. 
Okay, now the next new start, I'm gonna show you a couple of plans. I guess there's just this one more that's a plan. So back to Celeste from Celeste Creates, who just has a video out today. I was watching it while I was getting ready. I have to watch the rest. She mentioned on her last video that she's going to start Hannah Sanderson with, um, oh gosh, is it is it Kara, Pink Daisy Stitcher? I, I can't remember if it was with Kara um, from Instagram. And so they're gonna start this on Easter as an Easter start. And you may remember that I started Hannah a while ago and I only got the bottom part done. I was not happy with the DMCs for the dark colorway on the dark linen that I chose. I, it just wasn't speaking to me. So I had put her aside and I had started, I was gonna start this with Amy and Diane, but neither one of them have started yet. So when I saw Celeste show this and talk about she was gonna do the lighter colorway, I just said that I think that's going to work for me as well. So, uh, and I've made some adjustments. You know, I'm only stitching the bottom portion and I don't believe I'll be putting any of the border on. So it'll just be this inside section here. So I pulled all of the, I wanted to show you what I have, what I'm thinking of. I pulled all of the DMCs and I got them on my uh, plastic. I got these from Amazon, these plastic floss cards, I guess we would talk, call them. So I've got all my colors and for the lighter colorway this time instead of the dark. And I pulled some linen as just this morning. And I think the one, I'm going to show you the one I'm thinking about going with that, that really, I, it's Brea by Needle and Flax. I saw this and I thought, oh gosh, I think that's going to look really, really pretty with these colors. I'm not doing this very well. It's a little difficult with all these colors, but I think this is the one I'm going to go with. But I also pulled, <clears throat> excuse me, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. I had actually gone in there for my aged paper, my, my box of linen, my bag, my under the bed box of linen. I had gone in for my aged paper because I think this is also a really, really, really good choice because there's a lot going on. So I don't really need the highly modeled fabric. Gosh, I don't know. Now I'm questioning. This might be, still might be a really good choice. So here's the aged paper and here's the Brea. You can see, can you see the colors there? Hmm. Let me know what you think. I have I have a bit to decide, but gosh, this might be the winner. And then I also pulled ballet slipper when I was digging around in there. It's a you know that very light pink, and I think this would be a good choice too. But a little bit, I, I think I'll do the aged paper over the um, uh, the ballet slippers. I don't know. I haven't decided for sure. But these are my three choices. Let me know what you think. I really, I, I might do the aged paper. I don't know. When I pulled the Brea, I was like, oh, I really love that. I don't know. Picking linen. I tell you, that's one of the hardest things. And if you're going to make a color conversion, you know, to switch flosses out, it gets extra hard. But a linen is just a big, big deal. It's, it takes me a long time. I, I can't start pieces sometimes just because I can't decide on the linen. And I will just keep waiting until, until it's the right linen. Okay, so let's see what else we've got. We've got, I, when I was at the attic, I did buy a few charts. It wasn't quite market. I was kind of disappointed that I couldn't have made my trip right after market because I would have purchased everything from the attic when I was there. But right before that, let's do a few other things um, before that. I shared this on the video I did with Amy. It's a free chart from Just Stitching Along. Again, I forgot to look up who did it on Instagram or I saw their, their finish and they mentioned it was a free chart. I think this is an incredibly generous um, free chart, free sampler. So there's that. And then my friend Telly, who has a couple of videos out now, has some more new releases, so excited. So let me share them with you. I don't have any plans to start anything right away. I finished the little uh, Cupid for Valentine's Day, but she did this uh, fun cow. This was an original design of hers, I believe. I really enjoy this. I think this is gonna be one that it would be an easy thing to, to stitch this up in a nice little pillow. And again, this one as well. Gosh, you know, I don't like stitching letters, but I, I would stitch the whole thing on this just because of those colors. This would probably be the next one I would stitch. Yes. Yeah, I really like that one. And then a, a simple red sampler. and another beautiful red sampler. So make sure you check out Trelly, The Spanish Stitcher, available on Etsy. 
and go watch her floss tube videos, follow her on Instagram. She's lovely. All right, um, so now let's do the purchases that I got while I was at the attic, just because I always like to support my, my local needlework store, <laughs> even though it's not super close. Um, here is the, another one of the scattered seed samplers, Forget Me Not Pin Keep. Really, really love this one. This whole bird series right up my alley. And the Scarlet House. So pretty. Flowers and birds, my two favorite motifs. I've loved this for a long time. I will probably not stitch the whole top portion and just this bottom section, but I love these colors. Sorry, Helen Murray by Needle Made Designs. This has been out for a couple of years. I, I just love these motifs. Okay, then I have my, um, my market, the, the market things that I got so far that I wanna share with you. I, even though I wasn't planning on getting all of these at the same time, you know, right away, I have already enjoyed looking through these charts many times and just enjoyed just looking through them, looking at what they take to kit up and think about it. And I, I'm, I'm not sorry that I got everything all at once. Okay, Thy Love More Strong by Blackbird Designs. I know, I know by now you've probably seen all the things in here, but just in case, let me do a quick, let me show you a few of the things in here. That's the one on the cover. Yes, yes, please. I think I'll just stitch the entire sampler. I know that then she broke it down and did some smaller things to the box cover here. Be a nice little exchange piece. And let's see what the other one was. And then made this into the drum. I think that's really, really sweet there too. But I'm just gonna stitch this whole thing. That's beautiful. As well as I would like to stitch this whole thing here too. That's the other Blackbird Moments of Glad Grace. Even the border. There are quite a few um, charts that I got where I feel the border is necessary. You know, many of you <laughs> think the border is always necessary. <laughs> but uh, she broke this down into some other little projects as well. This little bird that looks like a roadrunner on top of the box. Another really good small or exchange piece and let's see if there was one more yes this is really cute also from the front um sampler she just broke it down into some other ideas that's on a book look at that very clever okay so i think those were the smalls oh no one more now I have to get this banding. I know this is banding. It actually comes like that. So I need to get some of that because this is adorable. I would love to stitch this as well. This little pillow. Super cute. All right, then, of course, these are all favorites of mine, so I won't even bother, but Annie B's Folk Art. Oh, so pretty. Now this is on Meadow Rue. I don't have any of this color, just not vintage Meadow Rue, but just Meadow Rue. But just a pretty tan pink, I think, would work well. Because Meadow Rose Lakeside Linens, it's very hard to get. Down in the Valley by Annie B's Folk Art. That pink house, all those flowers. Really, really love that. This is fun. My sister's samplers. Beasts, birds, and a berry tree. And I, I mean, that's I love this dog. These fun birds. This fun tree with I just this is just a fun sampler that bo except for the border that will not be fun I don't like stitching that kind of a border um this may be one that I don't stitch the border on this piece because there's a lot going on in the inside that I think it'll be all right and uh, this is probably the one I want to start right away uh, Grace Gill, 1838 by Little Robin Designs. So much going on in this. These cats, the gargoyles, I'll change the verse in here. Uh, but And this will be one that probably has to have the border. So I really want to get this kitted up. I do believe she's using, 
Gloriana. I think I looked and said, ooh, it's a lot. No, no, sorry, not this one. This is Gassed Weeks Dye Works Classic Color Works. Yay, I probably have most of these. And then some needlework press. I have three needlework press charts. Ellen Carr, 1843. Again, I'm gonna have to stitch that border. Love the colors in that. This was an exclusive to the, oh, I'm not gonna remember, Homespun Elegance, I think it is, Facebook group. Yep, gotta stitch that border. I've been waiting for this one, hoping it would come out at some point because I didn't get it through that, but. Oh gosh, I just want to start all of these right now. This one's not very large, so I feel like this might be another one I might start. And uh, and yes, have to stitch the border. It's just quirky and adds to the, the piece. MH1860, a cheerful 19th century sampler. It is that. This was exclusive to the Cruel Goblin when it first came out. So I think this is one I also want to get up right away. And I have, I, I, just the colors and I love the style of the letters. So I really want to stitch this whole thing. There was, which was the one, there was one that was kitted up for silks and I thought, oh, that's going to take a little bit more doing. Oh, it, okay. I think it was, yeah, these are the Glorianas. So I don't know. I'll probably just do the DMCs if I don't have, I, I'm looking at these. I don't have a lot of these, so I don't know that. Oh, yeah, actually I do. I have a handful of them. So maybe that'll be um, a combo. Okay, and then I have, do you watch Katie Strachan? Of course you watch Katie Strachan. And she has been showing chocolate hearts. I think it's going to be an upcoming kit that she's putting together. Hey, Katie. Uh, and the last video she has out with her mom, which I'm also in the middle of watching, uh, saved because I want to save her when her mom comes on to visit. So um, this is one that she's been showing lately. And I've had this for years. So I really need, she just keeps inspiring me to get this out and stitch this. So this might be something I try to get a start on as well. I don't know, so many things. And I haven't even shown you, I, I didn't show you the ones that I still have coming yet. So um, I was, I have to still get, they, they weren't able to get it at, on my pre-order. Uh, I'm stitching with, um, with Audrey from Stitch Stitch Bead, my Eve, Emmeline Hotchkiss. And we're going to do a sale for that one by Cross Stitch Antiques. And so I have to still um, get that one. Uh, Audrey, I don't, I don't have it yet. So it's all right. I know we've got plenty to start. Um, okay, let me see what else. I have notes in case I forgot anything, but I think they're buried. Uh, in case you didn't watch again the video I did with Amy and Diane, I wanted to show you the bag that Diane made from the panel, the um, tea towel that I got from um, Hats. I gifted this to Diane and she gifted it back. <laughs> So thank you, Diane. It's fabulous. Look at how she used the entire tea towel. And she made it this large on purpose because she knows that I like to put my Q-snaps sometimes in my bags. And so she made it a specific. Here's Diane Woodpecker's daughter. She doesn't make these to sell. Um, she just graciously made that. Oh, I just, I love it so much. So I wanted to be able to show that one again. Oh gosh, I feel like there may be stuff I forgot. And if so, I guess we'll just have to chat about them next time. Oh, I did have um, I did have a whip. I gotta let Darlene know. Darlene, I did do the give up on Mighty Acorn by Blackbird Designs. I was stitching it with Darlene. Um, I it's just I it's not one I wanted to complete. Uh, there's just so many other things, and I knew I have a friend who did want to stitch it, and so I gifted it to her. So it went to a great home. And I, oh, I really need to dig out my notes because I just feel like there might be something important I missed. I was curious how many of my market releases from last year that I still had on the go. And I, I didn't, it's not a complete list, but Gathering Stitches by Luminous Fiber Arts is one that I actually finished. Um, Let No Net and Snare Me is an ongoing whip I showed you earlier. That was a market release I got from last year. Eliza's French Birds was another one that I finished. Pretty Pink Pin Keep was one that I finished. Um, then a couple others I still have on the go. A Tender Father by Schoolhouse Samplers. I, I haven't finished that one. So there's still a number of market releases that I fell in love with last year that I have yet to finish. Let me make sure. Taking a peek here. Yeah, I guess. Gosh. I think that's everything. Oh, GH, uh, the GH sampler, the big blue, the 
the house with the blue roof. That is going to be a sale. Now I started that, I think I forgot to tell you, I started that as my leap year day sale. So I have four years to complete that. Um, and I know that there is going to be a start along, a stitch along for that starting in June. Um, Karen mentioned that, Karen Combs mentioned that on her video. And I, I think it's by Suzy Q Runs with Needles on Instagram and another friend. They're going to start a sale for that in June. So if you love that chart and you still want to get a stitch on that, or get a start on that, um, I think that's going to start June or July. I think it's June. Okay, that's everything my notes say. I think that's everything I have around me. So I, th I think we're good to go. Um, my husband is going to share scripture and I hope that you will stay, but that's all the stitching that I have for you. It's going to be exciting to see how many things I get started from all of these new market releases and how much progress I continue to make on my current whips the next time we get together, which will probably be a few weeks. It's nice. I think three weeks gives me a little bit more time to have a, a lot of things to show you. I like having a lot of things to share with you. So gosh, I guess that's it. Let me know if we're stitching anything in common. Maybe let me know if you have thoughts about which Lynn and I should choose for Hannah Sanderson. I'm going to I'm going to lay it out and do a lot of walk bys. I'm just going to lay lay it out with the linen and I just kind of walk by and think and walk by and think. We'll see. Maybe something will really speak to me. And uh gosh, I just I hope you're enjoying everything that you're stitching on and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Everyone, take care. Welcome back. Thank you for staying and allow me to share some scriptures again with you today. Um, I wanted to share with you uh, today one of the most important doctrines in all of Scripture. It is the doctrine of justification. Uh, I know that's a kind of a scary theological word, and many of you out there may not have heard of it or understand it. Um, if you're part of a good Bible-believing church, Bible-teaching church, um, hopefully your pastor has taught this and you do understand it. But my goal today is just to give you a basic definition um, of the doctrine of justification and explain um, why it's important in our lives. And in between that, I wanted to uh, give you a few scriptures that um, talk about it. There are many, many scriptures in the New Testament, but I was able to pick out a few. So first off, um, I want to give you a basic definition of what justification uh, is. It's the act of God by which he declares the believing sinner righteous based on Christ's finished work on the cross. In simple terms, it's that we cannot earn eternal salvation in heaven based on our own righteousness or our own good deeds. It is only by Christ's righteousness given to us that we can be saved. And the other important thing to, to note is that it's an instantaneous one-time act of God um, when we put our faith in Jesus uh, for eternal salvation. So that's the basic uh, the definition of it. I wanted to give you a few verses in the New Testament. Um, it's Roman, the verse is Romans 3, verse 28. Uh, it says, For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Romans 5, chapter 1 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the last verse I'm going to share with you today is Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. It says, Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Christ Jesus, so that we, so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law, since by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. Uh, I hope that this um, set of verses I've given you will spur you or spur you to uh, dig a little deeper um, into this doctrine. We are going to link a sermon that our pastor did last year in a series that he did on the great doctrines of the Bible, and uh, this is one of them. And, you know, I wanted to just lastly state, you know, why it's so important that we understand this. Um, you know, I know for me, when I first became a believer, it's 14 years ago now, and I first learned this doctrine, 
um, it really gives me, it gives me and it gave me an assurance of my salvation, knowing that I don't have to do anything else to get to heaven other than just putting my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And when I do that, when I did that, he imputed, he gave me his righteousness, and now I have that hope of eternal salvation. And I don't have to, you know, worry about am I going to heaven or not. You know, I have that assurance. And that's, you know, the great one of the greatest gifts that he's given me. So I hope that these uh, verses and this doctrine and this teaching has blessed you today. Um, uh, I thank you again for staying. And uh, God bless you all.